Brennan in Washington. We are coming on the air with breaking news. The wait is over. Presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has chosen Kamala Harris as his running mate. Harris is 56 years old, a former federal prosecutor, former attorney general of the state of California, and she has represented that state in the Senate since 2017. The announcement was made just moments ago uh, via text message to supporters. Some 83 days are left between now and Election Day, but even before Joe Biden officially clinched the Democratic Party's nomination for president back in early June, he had made clear he wanted a woman on the ticket beside him. And in recent weeks, he's interviewed a number of possible candidates, including a number of women of color. The choice of a running mate is arguably one of the most important decisions that he has made to date. He turned 78 years old shortly after Election Day and would be the oldest person to become president if elected. Let's go now to CBS News political correspondent Ed O'Keefe. Uh, Ed, this is an unconventional campaign. We got the text message just a, a few minutes ago. Uh, Senator Harris, tell me, what was the deciding factor? Well, yes, and we should read this text, although I bet many of our viewers may be getting it themselves. Joe Biden here, it says, big news, I've chosen Kamala Harris as my running mate. Together with you, we're going to beat Trump. Add your name to welcome her to the team. The website appears to have been updated as well with a photo of the two of them. Uh, you know, Margaret, if you talk to many Democrats across the country who've been involved in these campaigns, rank-and-file voters, this is an inevitability that they were rooting for from the start. Uh, the combination of a former vice president who has universal name recognition now with a woman from the largest state, only the second African-American woman elected to the U.S. Senate, somebody who had been elected twice statewide in California. She is, of course, the former district attorney for San Francisco, the former attorney general of California, and told me in an interview last year that she hadn't thought about running for president until right after she was elected on election night 2016 and decided uh, after talking to some people in the wake of the victory of the president uh, that perhaps it was something she should take a look at. And of course, many people will think to themselves, why would Joe Biden want to pick somebody who went after him in such a direct personal way in that first debate last summer in Miami? But in reality, uh, we will probably learn in the coming hours that Biden ultimately decided she is best equipped to join him in this endeavor. And remember the incredible pressure he's been facing since he announced in March that he would be picking a woman to not only pick a woman but to pick a woman of color six women of six black women were considered among them the former national security advisor susan rice two members of the house uh, and uh, Stacey Abrams, the former Georgia lawmaker. There was a Latina governor. There was an openly lesbian senator, Tammy Baldwin from Wisconsin, and Tammy Duckworth, the Iraq war veteran. But ultimately, Harris, arguably at this point, the best known uh, of, this, uh, of this group, uh, though didn't go as far as Elizabeth Warren, who was also considered, uh, is now the pick. Hearing from a few uh, folks inside the campaign and those that have worked for her before, that. Uh, that they're very excited by this and uh, we know that just in the, the last few hours uh, a heads up was given if you will to a lot not only in the campaign but around the democratic party that the announcement was likely coming today because the biden campaign understood they could no longer hold on to this much longer without it leaking out uh... harris as far as we know uh... is still here in washington uh, lives just a few blocks from here we'll see uh, if she somehow snuck out that's happened in the past or if she's planning to make her way up to delaware perhaps to meet with the former vice president and Ed, Senator Harris is a historic pick for many reasons. Uh, the daughter of a Jamaican immigrant and an immigrant from India. She is Asian American. She is African American. She was looked at as a contender. She was a rival even before the moment of reckoning that we have now entered as a country when we talk about racial injustice. How much of a factor was that in her selection and what will that mean in terms of mobilization for the vote itself? Well, there was a lot of concern that were a African-American woman not chosen, there was the potential that African-American voters, Latino voters, and younger voters perhaps that want to see uh, such stark diversity and important diversity on the ticket would stay home. Remember, that was a real issue for Hillary Clinton four years ago, especially in big Midwestern states like Michigan and Wisconsin, to some extent in Pennsylvania. And so there's been an understanding ever since election night 2016 that a lot more had to be done to motivate 
uh, and draw out minority voters, younger voters who want to see this kind of, uh, of a bold move. And it is a bold move. She's, she's been described by many as a safe pick compared to some of the others. Uh, but let's not lose sight of the history. We've never had a woman vice president. We've never had a black woman run on a major party ticket before. And, uh, and, and the added history of the fact that, yes, she's, she would also be the first South Asian uh, vice president, given that her mother is from India. So the, the Biden understood that, resisted the calls and the questions about it all throughout the summer, would bristle at them, frankly, when asked, are you going to commit to picking a black woman? And he made clear, look, I'm considering a wide number of people. Regardless, my cabinet will look like the country, will be diverse. Uh, and he has also vowed to put a black woman on the Supreme Court should he be elected president and there be a vacancy there. Um, but this will be compared in some ways to Ronald Reagan picking George H.W. Bush, one of his lead rivals. And uh, we will see here in the coming days what the Democratic Party makes of the decision. We, we certainly will. And with the CBS News latest battleground estimate that puts Biden ahead by about 10 points over Trump, over the current president, uh, we will see if this moves the needle for some voters. Uh, I want to go to Capitol Hill um, to get the perspective from our correspondent there, Nancy Cordes, who has covered Senator Harris ever since she was sworn into office in 2017. She is the sitting junior senator from the state of California. Nancy, uh, what is her uh, reception on the Hill like? How is she viewed? What do you see as her main uh, sort of legacy item as a lawmaker? Well, she is viewed, Margaret, as a, a very formidable interrogator, a legacy uh, uh, from her role as California's Attorney General. As soon as she got here, she was placed on a quartet of very high-profile Senate committees, the Judiciary Committee, Homeland Security, Intelligence, Budget, a reflection of the fact that uh, she was very adept at grilling uh, major players in the Trump administration and clearly from the very beginning also had higher ambitions. And so I, I spoke to a, a Senate aide a short time ago who described her this way. She's someone who can excite the base without upsetting moderates and someone who combines a prosecutor's skill with the passion of an advocate advocate that gives you a sense of why she made the cut at the end of the day and senator chris coons who like uh, former vice president joe biden is from delaware he's very close to biden just uh, told me a couple of minutes ago how excited he is about this pick he says senator harris is a great friend and colleague whom i've gotten to see in action on the judiciary committee she's smart tough warm and engaging and i've seen her take on leading trump officials from jeff sessions to bill barr she'll be a terrific partner so that's some of the early reaction margaret in fact uh, when she grilled jeff sessions a couple of years ago he famously told her that she made him nervous and certainly democrats are hoping that she will make vice president mike pence nervous when she goes up against him in their one and only debate Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill, and we know that uh, Joe Biden himself is expected to hold an event tomorrow in Wilmington, Delaware. He is at his home in Delaware uh, today, and we expect that event tomorrow to be the first one where they appear side by side. Uh, the senator from California now joining uh, the Biden ticket, Biden-Harris, uh, now the ticket we know that will be challenging President Trump uh, in 2020. For some perspective, I want to bring into the conversation Valerie Jarrett. You all remember her as a senior advisor to President Barack Obama, and she joins us today. Uh, I want to get your thoughts here on Senator Harris, what she brings, and how historic the decision to choose her is. Well, it is a historic day, that's for sure. I congratulate Senator Harris. She was up against really stiff competition never before in our history. If we had so many extraordinarily well-qualified people under consideration, she is bright. She has a great track record. Vice President Biden knows her well. Nothing like running against somebody to give you a clear idea of what they're going to be like on your team. So it's a great day. And we know Senator Harris uh, was also close at one point, friends with Bo Biden, Joe Biden's uh, son. Uh, she has talked about that. Uh, so while she was a rival, she also has a history with the Biden family. Does that uh, do anything in terms of building them a as a team? 
Sure, I think there's a level of trust and comfort. I think everybody else taught, uh, took that little skirmish in the debate much more seriously than Vice President Biden did. Uh, she's a known quantity to him and to our country, and she will be not only a formidable candidate, but an outstanding partner uh, in the White House. So it's a great day for both Vice President Biden and Senator Harris, but I think it's also a great day for our country. It's historic, it's important, it shows the inclusion of the Democratic Party. So game on. <laughs> Valerie Jarrett, uh, thank you for your perspective. I also uh, want to put this um, in the context of the broader race right now with someone who has direct experience uh, on the campaign trail. That is, of course, Robbie Mook, who managed Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign. He's a CBS News contributor. Uh, Robbie, uh, were you surprised by this? I mean, we already have people as prominent as uh, former National Security Advisor Susan Rice congratulating Senator Harris. Is this someone that the party will uh, feel good and put its arms around uh, from both the, the very progressive side and the more centrist Biden-defined uh, part of the party. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think this was a terrific choice. Um, it, it is historic. It is exciting. Um, but honestly, I think this was the strongest possible choice that the vice president could have made. You know, this is someone who's vetted. This is someone who's tested. I think, as Valerie mentioned, this is someone who went up, you know, toe to toe with him in the primary. He was big enough to choose uh, a former rival. And this is someone who's unquestionably ready to be commander in chief. She has the diverse uh, experience set to do that job really, really well. I think this is someone who everyone across the spectrum of the party is going to be excited about. I, I, I don't even her think there's going to be a process of unifying be behind her. No, I don't think so. In fact, look, you're seeing President Trump right now challenge the Democrats on the question of, of law enforcement, and she's going to be able to answer those questions. Um, so I, I think this is a great pick. It's surprising to us that it didn't leak until just now, uh, Robbie Mook, yeah. uh, and we are we are receiving it in a very uh, new way. Uh, that is, of course, a very new campaign season for all of us, uh, as many of us do it from quarantine, as we see you joining us uh, from your home there. Thank you very much, Robbie Mook. And once again, uh, we just want to highlight for our viewers the news of the morning uh, and that afternoon, I should say, which is that presumptive Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden has made his selection. It is California Senator Kamala Harris who will be his running mate. The two will hold an event in Wilmington, Delaware tomorrow. Our coverage will continue on our 24-hour streaming network, CBSN. You can watch it at cbsnews.com or on our CBS News app. And there will be more news on your local station and tonight here on the CBS Evening News. This has been a CBS News special report. Thank you for the team of correspondents who joined us. I'm Margaret Brennan, CBS News, Washington. 24 hours a day. Go to cbsnews.com.